Automation has driven big changes in India's finance ecosystem by opening up opportunities for institutions to increase profitability, decrease errors, and potentially lower liability. Now, RPA or robotic process automation is now being capitalized to enhance fraud prevention, improve financial product interaction, and of course, harness big data. But process automation is not only an efficiency driver for the big banks. Smaller players who are agile in the BFSI space are leveraging this technology in a more orchestrated manner by making sure that automated tasks work together to fulfill business critical objectives which serve both customers and employees. Now to get a ringside view of the success stories emerging from small finance banks tapping AI and automation to unlock new revenue streams through continued innovation, we bring to you this virtual panel discussion titled Cracking the Code, Automation to Drive Big Changes in Small Finance Banks. I'm your host, Gautam Trinivasan, and joining me on this panel are leaders from a variety of small finance banks who will share their firm's experience with automation and outline solutions to the challenges they faced in orchestrating a new way to work in finance. Our panelists for today are Sharad Gokhlani, who is the President and CTO at AU Small Finance Bank, Nilesh Sangoi, CTO at FinCare Small Finance Bank, Venkat Krishnan, who is the CTO at Ujjivan Small Finance Bank, Vivek Dhawale,
Well, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining back. Well, as I just to recap uh, what I was saying, uh, automation, as I mentioned, has driven big changes in India's finance ecosystem, and it's opened up opportunities for institutions to increase profitability, decrease errors, and potentially lower liability. RPA or robotic process automation is now being capitalized to enhance fraud prevention, improve financial product interaction, and harness big data. And as I mentioned, we have a, a galaxy of speakers from the finance space to tell us how automation is helping them take the fight to the big boys. And uh, you're getting, going to get a ringside view of the success stories which has emerged from small finance banks. Let me again quickly recap the speakers for today. Sharad Goklani from the AU Small Finance Bank. Nilesh Sangoi, who's from the FinCare Small Finance Bank. Venkat Krishnan from Ujjivan Small Finance Bank, Vivek Dhawale, who is from Equita Small Finance Bank, and of course, Milan Shet, who is the EVP for the IMEA region at Automation Anywhere. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, let's start the discussion by understanding the broad trends which are shaping this uh, banking landscape. And Sharad, I'll come to you for the first question. Now, the share of adults with a bank account has more than doubled in India since uh, 2011. That's according to statistics from the World Bank. Now, small finance banks do have a critical role to play in this as they expand access to financial services in the country, uh, especially the rural and semi-urban areas. So what, in your opinion, are the latest trends dominating this landscape? Okay, hi everyone. So, <clears throat> so yeah. your audio on mute. So, if you could unmute your audio and speak. Yeah, I've I've done it. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll look at the trends which are coming up, but maybe we can uh, have a little flashback of what has happened in the last, uh, you know, two decades or maybe three. Uh, and if you you all remember, there was. Uh, what we called it as an IT revolution in the mid 90s to late 90s, uh, you know. Uh, so the 90s was essentially an IT revolution, the decade of IT revolution. Then we saw telecom and OTT players. Uh, you know that revolution happened in in 2000s. Then we saw the BFSI and fintech revolution in the 2010s. And now we are seeing, you know, in a way, you know, all all of these things are coming up uh, together in this particular decade of 2020s. So. Uh, the boundaries are fusing today. A WhatsApp call, for example, sounds. Uh, I hate to say that because I was working for a telecom operator, but a WhatsApp call today works far better than, uh, you know, uh, when we call directly over a telecom network. Um, SMSs, for example, you know, they were considered a mode for offline communication, etc. They have become really critical because now OT <laughs> OTPs are being delivered, and you know, we our financial transactions depend on them. So. Essentially, what we are seeing is, you know, all these technologies of the last three decades or so are coming together. And, uh, you know, we we are seeing uh, automation, of course, uh, you know, you, you uh, in, the, in your introduction, you did mention automation of all the mechanized work by, by the use of bots. Uh, you know, not all bots are, not all automations are via bots, but yes, that's a um, you know, micro difference we can talk about. But, you know, today mechanized work is being used, is being done by bots. And then further, these bots will learn and then, you know, they, they will learn our behavior, which we, which we are fondly calling as machine learning. This will further jack up the automation. So it's basically a virtuous cycle by way of, you know, uh, you know, as far as automations is concerned. And we are talking about auto healing, auto corrections, self healing, you know, even, even driving cars is being automated. So that's the technology landscape where, you know, we are, we are looking at, uh, you know, full transparency, full automation, you know, that's the kind of uh, decade that we are looking at with blockchain and bitcoins and, you know, all these networks already, uh, you know, in half evolved stage. So that's where we, you know, we are, we are, uh, we are seeing. So if I, if I wish to converge all these developments that have happened in the last two, three decades, you know, the one word can be called as tech, you know, essentially this decade is tech, Hyperloop and SpaceX and Tesla and everything is tech. Banking indeed is technology. So, you know, we, we in fact, recently uh, were talking about, you know, uh, uh, tech is banking and banking is technology. So, you know, from an SFB standpoint, uh, uh, coming to that, uh, we started off, uh, you know, about five years back and SFBs, uh, I think they have already started uh, making their presence felt in the banking landscape. And, you know, from, uh, from, from a technology standpoint, a late start in a way also means that 
we could come up uh, with a with a technology curve a bit faster and uh, you know in the last one and a half years whatever unfortunate uh, you know incidents have happened and lockdowns have happened but uh, you know the the brighter side of the story is that digital uh, is a pro proliferation is increasing and it is also leveling the playing field further uh, so i don't need to compete with only the physical footprint of uh, the big boys as you said uh, so so innovation is the key net net you know we you know there in in a country our size you know one size fits all banking solution cannot happen we have to consider demographics gen z gen x you know all these people we have to acknowledge the presence of fintechs so uh, given all these technology development uh, developments that have happened i think innovation and cooperation uh, you know is probably the word that we have been using for some time uh, but cooperation between uh, you know banks and fintechs uh, you know is 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 probably the way forward this we'll see this happening in this decade even more My apologies, gentlemen. There's some technical difficulties from my end. Uh, so I guess we'll have to take the question again because I couldn't hear uh, Sharad's answer. So Sharad, if I could ask you that question again, you know, uh, the share of adults, as I mentioned, the bank account has more than doubled in India since 2011, according to statistics from the World Bank. Now, small finance banks have had a critical role to play in this as they expand to uh, the country's rural and semi-urban areas. So if you could outline uh, the latest trends dominating this landscape. Sure, sure, Gautam. So I, I'll go uh, maybe one more time. So uh, see, before we look at the future, maybe I, I would you know uh, look uh, take a peek at the past maybe a little bit. So in the last uh, two to three decades, we saw uh, at least three revolutions, right? And at least in my working career, so we saw an IT revolution, uh, which started somewhere in 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 90s, mid 90s, and uh, and then we saw a telecom revolution in in uh, 2000s, and then we saw a BFSI and fintech revolution, which is uh, which is now happening in the 20, which happened actually in 2010s. And if you if you really look at all of this, uh, all this while there has also been a convergence of sorts because you know let's say. Today we, you know, I, what the example that I was giving was, you know, WhatsApp call uh, sounds, uh, you know, far better than what we call, what we do it on a telecom network. You know, that's unfortunate because I worked uh, and I'm a fan of my my telecom operator as well. Uh, but that's the fact. You know, te technology has has kind of uh, you know worked that way. SMSs that were considered offline, you know, they are now coming on the critical financial transaction path. Yeah, we, we, with OTPs, etc., have, which have to be delivered within, let's say, a second or two. Uh, otherwise, there is a big furor in the market. So we are seeing convergence. So current decade of uh, 2020s, which at least I think we we have seen three revolutions in the last three decades, and this decade will probably see a convergence. And then also, 
uh, like you said, automations. Of course, you know, while we are we are also converging, we are seeing uh, automations of all the mechanized work, and uh, which will go up to go to the next level of machine learning, right? Which would further jack up automations, and it will lead to a kind of uh, virtuous cycle. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, even even driving cars is becoming automated. So, what to talk about? You know, IT and you know, finance stuff. So uh, you know, so this is uh, this is what at least I have seen in the last uh, you know three decades or so. So if I converge all these developments, you know, what is the one word that I I can summarize all of this? Essentially, it would be tech. You know, so tech. This decade is tech, Hyperloop and SpaceX and you know the Tesla, Elon Musk, all these Amazon, Jeff Bezos, everybody. You look at the billionaires list. You know, I think more than half of them of top ten are are all tech. Banking is indeed technology. So. So that's what, at least my view is from a technology standpoint. From a, a small finance bank standpoint, I think we we had a humble beginning about five years back or so. Uh, but I I think uh, and and you might want to correct me. Uh, <coughs> SFBs have already started to make their presence felt in the banking space. You know, that's at least my view. Uh, and a late start, uh, you know, in a way also helped us come up our technology curve uh, fairly quickly, you know, at least on the liability side. And uh, now, you know, given whatever lockdown situation we are in, and there is indeed a blessing in disguise in this uh, because the digital is now leveled the playing field. You know, so so I don't need to really compete with the physical footprint alone of the larger banks. So I can I can. You know, look at uh, my own innovations on technology and digital, and uh, you know, because India, of course, is is a country where one size fits all won't work. So we have to have, uh, you know, we have to consider demographics, and you know, we have to acknowledge the presence of fintechs and so on. So I think innovation, uh, continuous innovation, and uh, you know, the this is the decade of cooperation, if I may, uh, between you know banks and fintechs and and many other players uh, in the ecosystem. Of course, I didn't talk about IOTs, etc., which is happening, but they will also have to participate. So it's a it's a it's a mega uh, kind of uh, you know convergence that is going to happen in the coming decade. There there is indeed a universe of items you can you can discuss when it comes to tech and transformation. As and as you mentioned, convergence is the key word here, and uh, we need to see how all of this helps people on the ground. I guess that's the that's the key here and uh, nilesh let me come to you as more parts of the unbanked population become first time users of formal financial services catering to this new customer base it comes with its own set of challenges so if you could outline some of the challenges faced by your bank and the strategies and tools that uh, were used to overcome those issues thank you this is a very apt question here all of us from small finance banks uh, we we do have a very large portion of our customers who are uh, interacting with the formal financial system for the first time. So uh, yes, there are challenges and there are opportunities. Uh, when I look at challenges, uh, the typical challenges are that a lot of financial services today are available in the form of digital. When somebody mm. from a from a urban uh, backgrounds have to interact. It comes very naturally to people. Uh, we think this is, you know, part of our life day to day uh, because we've been using it for a long time, and we think this is the natural way of dealing with finance. Only if we go a decade back, we realized that uh, it wasn't so much digital, and we had to visit the branches and a uh, lot of physical cash handling. All of those things where we have gone through that cycle. So when we look at it, uh, obviously the first thing comes is about the financial literacy, the digital literacy about of these customers, and uh, we have to spend a lot of uh, efforts uh, in uh, you know providing them the right uh, understanding of uh, the products that they are availing, the services that they are availing, the you know the the, the rates that they are availing, uh, yeah. you know, have very very clear understanding of all of that, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, then that after that comes the digital literacy obviously wherever mm. they have to have interfaces on digital so how do we help them uh, you know to whatever extent i mean you know it's it, it's also a gradual approach where you know a lot of uh, people who are going to the digital first time also go via stuff like whatsapp mm. uh, natural to everybody so uh, how do we use those channels which is natural for those customers to you know, onboard digital. 
Uh, mm. I think, uh, beyond that, also, how do we help uh, protect their interests and uh, you know uh, avoid them uh, getting uh, defrauded is mm. another important thing because many of these customers, like you know, the for example, the women folk uh, that we serve in the rural uh, part of the country, uh, mm. many times they will be happy to share the OTP to anybody. Uh, thinking that this is required as part of the work without realizing the person who is asking for the OTP uh, may basically wipe off the mm. balances in the account. Uh, so this understanding we have to constantly communicate uh, to them uh, time and again. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's very easy for them to get uh, defrauded and also lose the entire trust factor from this mm. financial system. So that's another so some point. examples you could give us from what FinCare has done to address these issues. As you mentioned, you've, you've spoken of financial literacy, digital literacy. So looking at all these challenges, what are some of the things that FinCare did differently? So we, we do this, uh, you know, this is a lot of physical programs that we conduct for people to understand. Also, what are you talking about? Better security uh, norms for those customers that, you know, their, their limits will be lesser, our fraud monetary mechanism for those kind of customers will be more stringent because mm. they can get uh, frauded with even smaller amounts. So, how do we ensure that uh, you know they uh, at, at the, uh, the you know at the rule level we can control some of these frauds? So mm. Always uh, in a longer term, and you know, more far more effort driven process. Even in even in the institutes in the companies, the educated people also will see. When it comes to say phishing attack, etc., it's very yeah. very difficult to protect uh, that through constant education because although that's absolutely required, but still yeah. people are afraid to many of these phishing uh, phishing attacks. Just purely you cannot rely on education factors. You have to build those necessary controls that can automatically also prevent some of this. Uh, Another yeah. idea is uh, you know how can we help them with uh, you know, various uh, government schemes, government services. The, you know, the direct benefit transfer, how do we link their accounts with that uh, easily, how do we help them avoid those various uh, you know, uh, insurance uh, offers that the government has come with at a very, very low cost, how do we help yeah. them, you know, because they are not aware of this, many of these, or maybe they are aware but they don't know how to go about it, so how do we help them handhold that, that's yeah. an important area, again, a lot of it is communication and we have to go beyond uh, normal means of communication many times that we for, follow for our urban customers. And mm. it has to be audio, basically, uh, you know, it could be audio in that, uh, you know, in local languages. How do we communicate? So that? they can understand it and, 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 and take action accordingly. That's interesting. I mean, it, it, it brings into focus how you are tailoring an approach for a, a particular set of customers. And as you expand and expand into newer areas it, it is also a learning experience for you but as you mentioned financial literacy digital literacy let me take that forward and let me ask vivek this question considering that you know the target customers for small finance banks are largely low income households with limited access to education what role do you see vivek in technology playing in upgrading the overall customer satisfaction index of this user base yeah so um Actually, I would take this question as two parts, right? One is the role of technology and second is about customer satisfaction index. Now, technology only enables the customer satisfaction index. It may or may not directly uh, improve the customer satisfaction index. So just to say, uh, you know, how are we using, how are we using our technology is even with uh, the group loans, you know, the rural area loans, we call it uh, GLG, Joint Liability Groups. Mm -hmm. So there we have enabled our uh, employees to go with uh, you know, mobiles and tabs and could collect their information, whatever required directly on tab without really uh, you know exchanging papers now with UIDI interfaces. A whole lot of verifications, KYC, etc. can be done. So thereby, uh, you know, enabling them to uh, get it to a stage where we can definitely get back to them with the blood we can grant alone or we cannot pause this. But the point is, you know, to improve the customer satisfaction index, I think what is required is 
banks commit something and that is something similar or you know customers can um, feel or you know agree to so for example uh, when we started with a selfie account we said we will do this account opening in 3 minutes Hmm. and that is the target and with the help of technology of course and because uh, we can accept uh, aadhar number and uh, pan card and otp verification we complete hmm. the journey in 3 minutes now i think that uh, part of it is what actually improves the customer satisfaction and it's and technology is an enabler definitely hmm. an enabler i'm sure everybody will like agree that you know without uid interfaces without apis without uh, all this it would never have been possible Hmm. and then subsequently we uh, commit you know that a full kyc will happen in next n number of days and that is a maybe a physical verification as per the policies or compliance requirements or regulators requirements and hmm. then that is done i think that that is how uh, you you change the customer satisfaction in this all right milan let me get you in uh, on this question of uh, we uh, to expand the issue of challenges Uh, the RBI has recently, I believe, announced a three-year special long-term funding facility for small banks to ensure lending support for small businesses affected by the pandemic. I'm shifting the conversation here from, say, a B to C to more uh, to a more B to B angle. How can technology help in real-time decision-making, fraud detection, and reduction of credit risk, both from a B to B and a B to C perspective? What's your view on this? I think uh, you know I definitely am not an expert compared to the other four colleagues here who are running the business uh, you know in this in this domain however uh, what Gautam I can share is uh, in a B2 B2 C uh, area that how are you able to reduce the cycle time in fact example of the of the larger banks or even uh, distributor led models uh, whether in insurance or in uh, uh, you know various uh, domains where there is a your relationship or interactions are not with the end consumer but an intermediary and typically in india in a financial services domain the intermediary has a variety of processes uh, from kyc to getting you know approvals uh, in the mortgage side and so on and so forth and typically we have seen that the automation again is a great opportunity uh, because what it does is that the processes are well defined the rules boundaries are very well defined then mm. instead of having that human intervention you can truly have you can truly have machine led inter- intervention which i think that uh, referred to uh, you know we call it as machine learning you call it as an ai but essentially uh, you are able to do an unsupervised learning on those documents and accelerate your throughput there are many mm. examples i can quote from the intermediary industry like a mutual fund processing uh, like uh, health insurance pps today they are engaging with hospitals or the end mutual fund even to interact with the customer and accelerating that cycle time uh, within mm-hmm. the organization the second point you touched on around the uh, around the entire credit uh, cycle and uh, our ability to uh, i in my view it is not a, i would call as a fully automated area it is a human mm-hmm. bot collaboration area so while you are approving while you are processing you need a certain intervention uh, getting validating validation of the data and and so on i think that's an area where again in my view uh, you know whatever little we have seen in the in the msme segment in the uh, where where an agent is working or an employee of a bank or institute is working and then the mm. bot is working uh, you know kind of keeping customer informed uh and in the entire process i i would say three things you know if i just sum up because a small finance bank deals with a lot of unstructured semi structured mm. data uh, wow. from either distributors uh, or intermediaries or even end customer second mm. is you have this rule based processes at the back end uh, mm. right where you 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 can really put automation and the third area is where you have a combination of human and a bot a classical example in insurance to me if i may draw uh hmm. drop on is is you know all the contact center has become fully digital where hmm. where the customers kind of log in and then the then the bots kind of do pre call and a post call closure you know activities and then the and the and the agent spends more time talking to the customer versus really clicking you know and and uh, entering data so i think i think it's a little bit of a wider answer gotham to a, a question 
but but i'm just thinking of this variety of ways in which uh, you know many of the companies here and even uh, large financial institutes are really thinking of deploying mm-hmm. and and bringing this entire digital experience for employees or customers or uh, or supply chain all right uh, let, let let's get a reaction from the panel i'll come to venkat for for the case study that his company presents but before that let me get in sharad and uh, vivek uh, on their view sharad we'll start with you as uh, milan has has a kind of outlined the three basic points and it again dials back to the the point i raised earlier about orchestration for automation what are you using automation for that seems to be the key question which you need to address so what would you like to add to or react to what milan has said yeah it is it is more to kind of give a uh, give a flavor to what uh, milan said um, gautam so basically what uh, you know automations and you know uh, there are three elements to automation in my view and it's it's of course uh, you know the automation intuitively helps a lot of things but you know if i if i split these uh, these flavor uh, these perspectives uh, into three parts i can actually do that and these three elements are speed accuracy and trail you know so yeah. essentially a bot and automation gives me speed that's a no brainer it gives me accuracy because you know a bot is after all not a human being it can't make human mistakes you know uh, of course garbage in garbage out is always there uh, so so that is the second and the third one which is which is probably a little uh, you know uh, uh, undetected or maybe it's below the radar for the moment is is about the trail because and specifically gautam when you were talking about um, Uh, fraud detection and and elements of you know control and checks and security i think trail is very important which these bots so for example if i am doing uh, creating you know uh, uh, you know some kind of an aml bot for example anti money laundering or a fraud detection bot it will also leave me a trail because you know i'll have to hunt uh, for a particular uh, you know evidence on google on various way, and then i i'll i'll keep a trail of it as evidence so mm. you know which is very difficult if if a human being does that so i think uh, that's what i just wanted to in a way kind of give that flavor saying that there are three elements to automation accuracy okay. speed and uh, speed accuracy and trail all right let's see what vivek has to say to this vivek yeah hi i just wanted to sort of corroborate what milan said with what uh, i was trying to say so mm. in effect if you want to improve the uh, commitment or uh, you know be more consistent with your commitments it may be as simple as a statement request or a checkbook request yeah. uh, you know only with uh, tools like automation etc you are able to do it consistently and within the given time frame so if i say you know that a request will get their statements in the evening uh, whatever said and done holidays etc are always a challenge when it is human beings but with such tools you always are able to meet your commitments you know and automation and other technologies enabling this so absolutely uh, absolutely and consistency is what builds the brand at the end of the day the consistency of experience Perfect. between a customer and the bank that they are interacting with and of course there uh, you know the role of automation comes into center stage as well uh, to help things out and have that consistent experience venkat let me come to you you you've heard the panelists speak about the challenges and how they address them for, uh, from your company from digital banking to uh rpa adoption or jeevan small finance bank has been rolling out digital solutions for customers as well as back end solutions so out
And we're back. I apologize again for that interruption. Venkat, uh, if I could uh, come to you again uh, on the question which I, I, I had raised based on the experiences that everyone had, had stated from their organizations, from the, from the way they overcame challenges. Uh, for you, from digital banking to RPA adoption, as I mentioned earlier, Ujjivan Small Finance Bank has been rolling out a variety of digital solutions for customers as well as back-end solutions. So if you could take us through the challenges you faced in your digitalization journey and how you overcame them. So uh, to start off with, I will rather say that, you know, uh, I just hope this technology glitches were not a part of IT per se, because, you know, we get uh, rogered for that every time. Uh, so the margin for risk for us is extreme low when we uh, run a shop of uh, of this kind so uh, so to answer your question i think you know uh, let me uh, tell you the digital drivers for us in terms of you know when we talk about uh, digital rollouts or technology rollouts per se in on the automation side it gets driven by four important factors for us uh, any project or any automation project which we take has to uh, directly impact the cost to income ratio mm -hmm. or it has to directly result into operational efficiency or it should hit uh, something called as product per customer as a as a, a major line item or mm -hmm. it has to uh, get into uh, a bucket called as profitability per customer so it, it finally has to land up into these broader buckets when it comes down to ratios of the bank. And if it qualifies to do that is when we start uh, executing projects uh, uh, on the automation side. Hmm. Based on these basic principles is where uh, we have broadly, uh, uh, you know, uh, classified our uh, the digital banking journey into four major, vertic five major verticals per se. One on the fintech integration. Uh, fintech integration. When I talk about, uh, this is for both for collections, disbursements of both uh, collateral based and non collateral based uh, asset uh, products. Uh, uh, that is for MSME, micro banking, uh, uh, for uh, housing and uh, vehicle finance. Uh, and and when you talk about uh, the fintech integration, we are also looking at integration for fintech integrations, even for the liability based accounts. Uh, so uh, that is one part of my vertical when you talk about verticalized approach on the digital side. The other important vertical is on the API banking uh, uh, space itself. So we have around, uh, we have a, a, a library of uh, close to 164 APIs, which we have created, mm -hmm. uh, which actually uh, caters to these requirements uh, on the API banking space. So let me uh, leave it at that when, uh, you know, from an automation perspective, the third important thing when you talked about uh, is which directly impacts the operational efficiency. These are Operational efficiency, obviously, the other uh, the fintech integration does uh, play an important role. But uh, operational efficiency, we directly uh, we are looking at uh, bringing up uh, you know product product, uh, product profitability uh, to address the product pro profitability to that extent. Mm -hmm. So we have identified around 124 odd processes which we are auto, uh, we are uh, we have uh, automated and are in the phase of automating uh, mm -hmm. on the robotic process automation side. So it actually gives tangible benefit in terms of uh, manpower optimization, or if I want to call it as, uh, it also increases uh, accuracy in terms of data uh, and also brings about that efficiency uh, parameters as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we are also looking at both uh, you know, assisted model and obviously the non-assisted model of robotic process automation uh, to mm -hmm. bring about this change. So it actually, uh, when you could talk about, uh, uh, when the other gentleman was talk about what are the types of uh, 
uh, projects we start hitting for this uh, area is where wherever there is a, a mundane activity of data entry or a mundane activity which is being performed in the bank we have mm -hmm. done a time and motion study of it and we say that you know if 100 people are doing the same job uh, mm -hmm. why can't i look at uh, an opportunity to do that activity in a different way the other part of it is reconciliations uh, mm -hmm. you know you have hundreds of uh, you know you have hundreds of reconciliation programs which run on the bank side we have attacked almost uh, most of them we are uh, trying to look at it uh, for, uh, as a opportunity to convert that into a robotic process automation. The, All right. Uh, so let me, uh, the next important vertical we are looking at is the payments vertical. The payments mm. obviously with NPCI uh, and RTGS and, and, and the infrastructure itself is changing in a big way. And also there are so many uh, payment players in the market. So we mm. are using a payments as a different vertical altogether to address that problem in terms of doing things differently uh, and looking at it much more efficiently in terms of integration with the uh, payment players also. Hmm. Finally, AI-based platforms. So when you talk about AI-based platforms, we, we, we are actually uh, looking at a lot of areas like credit, um, collections. We are looking at uh, people who can provide us data by which we will be able to do a lot more uh, rules engine based approach to uh, to make sure that the straight through processing capability capabilities on applications increases and mm -hmm. we do that part uh, so a combination of everything uh, is what we talk. so when we talk about challenges i i just wanted to uh, so the challenge for us is not digital adoption per se because what we felt in uh, you know in our bank is a little bit different than what the other people uh, might or might or might not have it. because people at uh, tier four, tier five cities are much more capable and much more. Uh, mm. I would rather say uh, acquainted with how to use a digital platform or uh, how to use a tab. So that mm. actually has become a very very, uh, in you know, important tool for us rather than a lag for us in terms of uh, adaptation of technology per se. Uh, our uh important you know struggle if i really want to look at uh you know area where we want to improve upon big time is uh the efficiency part of it where we are working on we want to onboard a customer uh, or a fintech partner within a uh, within a span of say uh, a couple of weeks uh, by which mm -hmm. you know the whole uh, integration so that's the efficiency part of it in which we are working on and uh uh, we want to give that kind of uh, experience even to our partners uh, because mm. the uh, one way of looking at it is uh, the newer way of doing uh, inorganic growth is not by the traditional inorganic uh, growth of acquiring a company and running with it. Uh, mm. The important thing out here is inorganic growth is by partnering with fintechs and other things which which is going to make you much more agile. So, a sort and, of open model that you see an open model where you can yeah. incorporate the kind of uh, uh, partners that you want to to achieve the objectives that you state and that yeah. is where the market is headed and we'll talk more about that and of course the automation planning aspect of it but uh, uh, before i go there i also want to address another challenge and this is a question i'll i'll i'll, I'll pose to uh, both nilesh and sharad which is that you know the world bank report uh, is also hinting about a gender divide on the use of digital services uh, we've spoken you know in terms of tier one tier two tier three markets but if we dig deeper we also see that gender divide coming in and in india about 42 percent of male account users use digital payments while use while uh, just about 29 percent women do the same that's according to that statistic so how do you see technology helping fill this gap nilesh we'll come to you first so uh, two parts of this one is that uh, whosoever controls the finances controls the digital services so traditionally you know finances uh, management has been a passion of men uh, and uh, female have been coming in there's been a lot of changes happening so mm. but it, it will take time to catch up so that that's one part of it as 
Email, like you know, this microfinance industry has uh, demonstrated over last two decades. Uh, when women are interested with finance, uh, they can do wonders. They they they, they created this magic. Uh, while you know the the delinquencies are the least across the you know categories, uh, and uh, the way they have changed the the you know the lifestyles and the standard of living of their families with mm. uh, them you know getting meaningfully employed uh, has been uh, phenomenal and you know that's where the potential of india is also being that you know the large part of that women workforce as they come to uh, to the workforce uh, that's going to make the biggest impact on the <coughs> of the country so that that's one area the other area if you look at you said digital services uh, as a country, we have bypassed the you know the desktop, laptop kind of uh, digital access. We have completely gone through mobile. Now, mm. mobile and internet are the enablers for digital services. And if the, if you see the pattern of usage of uh, the uh, the ownership of uh, mobile phones or the internet users, th the internet user itself are like you know divided into 70, 30 male female. Save mm. the ownership of uh, mobile phone, forget about smartphone, that itself is divided to that extent. So I think all of these when changes happen, when this mm. ownership of mobile phones, ownership and availability of internet as that improves, there is going to be a major uh, improvement in the usage of uh, you know the digital services used by uh, females. And okay. uh, literacy, obviously literacy rate also will grow. Uh, I mean, you no. see the change. Uh, one small example of change I would give is the number of uh, females which enroll for the technical education. 20 years back, that was 5 Today, it is 50%. You know, the, the, this has changed so rapidly. So, today, half, half of the females in engineering, in engineering colleges are female. So, that, hmm. that change is going to come very rapidly. And that's... So you focus more on the literacy aspect of this yeah. and saying that that itself will will help uh, solve this problem. Sharad, if I could get in your view on this. Yeah, almost similar to what Nilay said, but uh, you know maybe you know the forty two percent of the men who do digital payments, uh, I would probably say that they also do it at the behest of women. But you know, jo jokes apart, uh, you know I think he did uh, touch upon two things. You know, digital and literacy. Maybe I'll I look at uh, you know the two terms uh, separately. Uh, so if we talk about the differential that you spoke about, 42 and 29 percent, right? So which is about 13 percent differential in digital payments. Now, if you look at literacy levels in India, I think uh, you know last year or maybe a couple of years back, the India uh, the the literacy level at at, at an India level was about uh, you know 78 percent. While uh, and if you split that into men and women, you know it was about eighty-four percent versus about seventy percent. So that's a differential of fourteen percent as well. So mm -hmm. that just part that. Now, if I look at the digital part of it, and of course Nilesh said, you know, uh, we are a mobile-first country. So we are about five hundred million, half a billion kind of a population who are mobile. You know, mobile in, who use mobile internet. Mm -hmm. And again, if you look at uh, you know the digital usage by men and women, keeping only the mobile, you know, we'll park aside the other portion of the internet, mm -hmm. uh, but mobile first, uh, we'll, we are looking at about, uh, you know, 300 million males and 200 million females using mobile internet, which essentially, again, if you look at the population, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the ratio to the population, it is about, uh, you know, 40% of the male population and 30% of the female population. So now that differential is about 10%. So mm -hmm. which essentially, you know, is, is driving the same point home, which uh, Nilesh was trying to say that, you know, when we do a digital, you know, and literacy, I think in digital area, women are kind of catching up. So the, so the differential of payments and differential in, in literacy, overall literacy levels versus the, lit the differences in digital per se, is, there's a difference of 4% there as well. So I think as, as and when the mobile internet penetration uh, grows in the country, I think that's where we are, uh, we are actually looking at. That's where the know, funding uh, point is. Narrowing the gap, and you know, of course, Vivek and Nilesh, they did mention about the joint liability group and all, and it's kind of amazing. I mean, if you look at uh, women, uh, rural folks, the joint liability groups, they are now, um, uh, you know, they are now getting their receipts on uh, QR codes. You know, so mm -hmm. so they have while they still might be using mobile phones of their sons or their husbands or whoever, 
but the fact is that the joint liability account is the ownership of that woman and you know she is uh, kind of started to use and understand how a qr code based receipt works of mm. course in the urban setting you know it is uh, you know in my uh, you know the only difference between my mom my wife and my daughter is that my mom uses uh, hotstar my wife uses prime and my daughter uses netflix so that's about the only <laughs> difference other than that i think uh, i think they are they are kind of at the same plane of technology so yeah i think i think to frame this from a, from an economic term perspective uh, you see the issue getting resolved from the demand side as literacy and every other uh, point gets uh, sorted you see the demand side uh, uh, being being sorted but my question still lies on the supply side of technology helping fill this gap uh, milan what's your view on this i think uh, i'll just you know both both nilesh and sharad said uh, i completely agree that there is a there is a little bit of a digital disparity sort of say but the great news is you know we work with national skill uh, development corporation and i can tell mm. you because this is an automation anywhere we train uh, 100000 plus students every year on ai and some of our uh, advanced products and the ratio is 60 40 in favor of uh, women uh, you know in technology so i think i think if you as sharad probably rightly pointed out that that the digital technology and particularly on the supply side uh, mm. you see you see a you know definite definite shift uh, versus probably the older uh, older play and just mm. one more uh, kind of dimension i'll add uh, is also the domain knowledge and and uh, if i if i look at some of the larger banks today uh, it's very interesting that Uh, when i look at the contact center processes we have automated or you know when cut touched on reconciliation uh, mm-hmm. and if you look at process owner ownership uh, you know probably 15 years back uh, you did not see many uh, you know just the the women process owners who who are really restructuring the process and on so i think that has changed completely so you've got two situations you have a technology side where there is a good supply chain and then you have mm-hmm. the then you have the process or the function side uh, you know where mm. you, you get a large number of uh, process un- understanding and coming in and hence then you kind of get it together and then get it digital so that's that's just the kind of one view uh, gotham uh, okay. uh, on how supply side is probably kind of shaping up okay i believe venkat has a point to add as well venkat yeah so uh, you know i i want to be a, you know probably i don't want to get into this debate of gender per se but you know gender is something which i don't see it as a a differentiating mm-hmm. you know there is no differentiating factor there in terms of usage because you know i'll just give you a practical uh, mm-hmm. uh example of it because when i where i'm staying in bangalore uh i go down i have uh, a, a nearby uh, market where marketplace where you get pani puri uh, pani puri walas you have this uh, guys who uh, sell fruits uh, and other things everybody mm-hmm. now has a uh, a digital a payment board which they have uh, uh, probably this is because of pandemic or whatever reason i don't know but there is a interesting thing because even for a pani puri uh, to be taken in in a street uh, mm-hmm. digital payments are being accepted uh so it is uh, and if i really look at it the guy encourages you know the person who is selling if whether it is a male or a female is encouraging you to pay by a means of a digital mode okay mm-hmm. uh, there might be they were, uh, you know these guys are much more street smart than us because they know the uh, nuances of uh, you know the credit issues which they have and other things mm-hmm. which they have to deal with at the ground level so if i really look at it uh, you know if it the penetration it's it's more to do with the demographic uh, population you are catering to you know on the age rather side than so that's your that point it's more demographic yeah, rather it's than it's demographic than the gender because gender okay. is i don't think gender is a big problem it is more of demography because uh, people who are adapted to uh, 45 and you know if you really look at it 50 and below people are comfortable doing transactions digitally about okay. that there is a little bit of resistance but i think you know even that is changing drastically because my mother in law mm. who i'm staying with in bangalore a mm. uh, 77 year old female uh, she is much more inclined to do paytm transactions than 
so it it it's uh, i could say the same about my mother as well <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's 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 not just about uh, gender but it is all about the mind shift change okay. which is happening all right you made your point uh, but also taking a key word there about the mobile revolution uh, uh, vivek equita small finance bank has been at the forefront of this digital wave uh, by offering industry first features such as a facial recognition mobile banking app and digital client onboarding so how, take us through you know how you leverage technology to enable digital banking for a section of society swept by that mobile internet revolution but because as you've heard everyone finds unique ways to 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 interact with the with the banking app and it's more about the services that you offer and people are getting more comfortable with using technology even if it's a tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 area yeah so um you are right what we have been uh, trying to do is you know try to attract as many customers for even account openings in your accounts other yeah. than the standard account services so uh, we have a selfie app from where we try to onboard accounts like i said we also try to commit that we will do this journey complete your journey in 3 minutes you no know, 180 seconds uh, flat uh, then we also have a video kyc uh, which we have enabled so you know we like it or not i think pandemic is also forcing us and you know trying to help us enable all these things at a much faster pace than what otherwise we probably would Uh, right. so video banking is another thing that we are going to uh, launch very soon where our call center agents will talk to the customers face to face on uh, on a video call and okay. accept their request and do uh, some verifications hmm. having said this uh, along with this we are also trying to see how we can work with the fintechs you know like if i use the same word that charat mentioned co competition then hmm. uh, there is a competition but you know you have to work together and mm-hmm. with them so we have a bunch of apis that have been uh, made available to them you know through which we get customers onboarded through our uh, vendors uh, mm-hmm. partners rather it's uh, not fair to say vendors and these mm-hmm. partners are also uh, helping us if you have seen the recent ads in economic times you would have seen you know we have uh, reached a milestone in less than 2 months almost mm-hmm. 1 lakh customers onboarded through partners so that is a uh, Uh, api enablement that we had to do on our side and mm. so all all these things we are trying to do with which we hope to go on that way the digital way absolutely and we hope you meet with success as well we have almost run out of time to so let me just get some uh, uh, summary statements on on the way ahead uh, let me get it from venkat and milan if I, if i could for since we have uh, less time so in 30 seconds venkat you know where well, there is the jam revolution the jandhan yojana aadhar and mobile it's been termed as a, a financial revolution that will sweep rural india in the near future so could you you know enlist the three big trends that you see sweeping this space in the next couple of years from a forward looking perspective in 30 seconds if you could uh, list the next three big things which are going to happen uh probably i would rather say that uh, uh, the digital payments will go to the next level uh, in terms of you know easing out on uh, on 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 in terms of payments collections will increase uh, and and also about uh, uh, when people were talking about uh, accessibility to funds that will mm-hmm. actually become much more easier and uh, fourth which will be which will uh, post corona Uh, uh syndrome which if i the health sector will be uh working very very closely with the banking sector not only mm-hmm. with respect to insurance covers and uh other things but you know it, there will be a lot more uh, things which will come up in the uh, collaboration uh, collaboration phase with the health players per se both on the governmental mm-hmm. side as well as on the private side uh in the health sector itself it will be a big 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 revolution there okay uh melan let me come to you uh, for this question as i said the, the big tech trends shaping up we have discussed you know how rpas are helping reduce costs and fuel growth for small finance bank by uh, automating critical and tedious uh banking processes let's say id management and credit report generation but where do we go from here on uh, what are the richer use cases coming up Yeah, I would I would say uh, on three things. Uh, you know, based on what we've seen, and this may not necessarily just apply only to small finance bank. It applies to all financial institutes uh, in in the country. Number one is the definitive shift 
in the in the behavior of the consumer uh, to choose and adopt a digital uh, media. So the physical office to, to visits and all of that probably uh, there'll be a perceptible shift, not just mm. not just in a tier one, tier two, but across the various uh, you know strata of of the demographic we have. Uh, number two, uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to speak today, but I I do believe that financial institutes are embracing uh, cloud-based applications uh, and providing access to distributors, suppliers, uh, employees, and you know, especially with work from anywhere kind of coming into play, uh, it will mm -hmm. be a part of the model versus response to a situation, part of the model. And probably the third one uh, we see is is more in terms of you know. A collaboration between human and a bot. Uh, there mm -hmm. will be situations where bots will be beneficial, but there will be situations where human intervention has to be there. And then there will be processes where it will be a kind of a nice, you know, synergy between the two. So it will shape up, obviously, from the company to company. But this broad, I would say, next three years, this will get executed. It is the way we see it from wearing a product lens. Uh, mm -hmm. product kind of a mindset. Well, I guess you could say that the future of banking itself is going to approach digital transformation in a more nuanced manner, where, as I read a quote recently, banking is no longer somewhere you go, but rather something you do. I guess the edge that automation can grant smaller players in the finance space to fast track development and deploy their products is just one part of the story. As we've uh, heard from a variety of players operating in that space, there are more innovative use cases to come as this digital revolution creates a level playing field in the finance space for big and small players where the strongest to emerge might actually win battles we know nothing about but experience on a regular basis. On that note, I'd like to wrap up this discussion. I'd like to thank all of the panelists for sharing their insights on this topic centered on cracking the code where automation to drive big changes in small finance bank. Uh, thank you so much for share, sharing with us your insights. And of course, this presentation has been brought to you by Mint. And a special uh, mention here is reserved for Automation Anywhere for partnering with us on this series. I hope we can invite all of you again very soon for another virtual session. But till then, uh, to all of you, have a great day. Thank you so much to our viewers also for tuning in. This is Gautam Srinivasan signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.